And glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, the only true God. And Jesus the Christ, which he sent. So I'd like to maintain that belief. I have to believe in God. The more I learn about the Bible, it becomes more and more difficult to understand because there's some great contradictions between the Old and New Testament. They're massive. I've included a lot of different verses to prove my point today. I was even uh, reading about Marcion. He was a very interesting character who I think took Pauliism in other words, the doctrine of Paul took it to the limit. He really wanted to believe in, in what Paul said to the point where he wanted to void out the Old Testament because he'd said, he said there was a different God. And I think I, I want to try to accumulate the information necessary to be able to talk intelligently about him. Because I think it's fascinating that he, he, uh, he had a very strange theology, and he chose Paul as his prophet. But it becomes very difficult to harmonize the Old and New Testaments. The more you read the Old Testament, and the more you read the New Testament, it becomes more and more difficult. But then you have to integrate it. So I have to believe in God. I'll never become an atheist. A lot of people that learn a certain amount of information from the Bible to a degree where they find out the contradictions that are in there, then they become like atheists. Then they don't believe in God anymore. That's that's what I have seen. But I'll never do that. I'll keep trying to uh, harmonize the two. The Old and the New Testament. Keep praying to God. I believe in a, in, in a supreme being. I believe in a supreme God. I mean, even though you know the doctrine of Moses and the doctrine of Jesus, in many ways, well, the doctrine of the Old Testament compared to the doctrine of Jesus in the New Testament, very, very different. Let me just get right into it. Start talking about all these different verses. So here we have Deuteronomy. I have 18 verses. i got a ton of verses here. All right. If a prophet rises among you or a dreamer of dreams, that was Jesus. It gives you a sign or a wonder. He gave a lot of signs and wonders. And the sign of the wonder which he foretold to you comes to pass. And oh yeah, well, a lot of the things. I mean, he didn't prophesy the future and have it come to pass. But he, his signs and wonders happened. Uh, but now it's saying, saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. Well, Jesus didn't say, let's go after other gods. He never said that. But he made himself, he proposed himself. He was proposing himself as another god. He didn't say he was a supreme God, but he said he was a God, that he was a, he was a pre-existent God. He, he wasn't even born for the first time on the earth. He didn't start his life as a man. He lived before. He incarnated into a physical human body from a Eternal, some kind of eternal existence that he had with God. He called him his father. And nobody in the Old Testament said too much about father. In fact, I think it's only once where it talks about God as father in the Old Testament. So in a sense, he did say, let's go after other gods. He says, let's go after me. <laughs> Go after me. I am a God that leads you to, to the supreme God. That's really what he was saying. And so that can be considered another God. But not really a different doctrine, but it was a different doctrine. Because the doctrine of the Old Testament 
said that if anybody commits adultery, they need to be killed. But then somebody came to him, well, some people came to him with a woman that was caught in adultery, and he said, no, no problem, don't stone him. Now that's, a, that's the complete opposite of what the doctrine was given to Moses. And the list goes on. The God of the Old Testament did not teach love your enemies. No way. No possible way can you say that the God of the Old Testament taught love your enemies. Well, how is it that the God of Jesus, who was supposed to be the same God as the Old Testament, said love your enemies? That's a different God. The Old Testament God said destroy your enemies. But there's different things that were said, which I want to get to. Let me move on. Verse 3. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer or of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you. He's just testing you. To know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So, if somebody came and said, I am a God to lead you to God, then they were supposed to be consider it a test whether they really loved their God, God of Moses. They weren't supposed to believe that. And they still don't. I was listening to a Jewish woman talking about her faith in Israel. There's a, a Jewish guy who became a Christian. He's a a Christian about five years, he doesn't know everything, but he goes and he tries to talk to the Jews in, in Israel, tell them that Jesus is good and Jesus helped him and blessed him and so forth. And uh, the woman who is a Jew in Israel, she prays in the morning just like a Christian would and apparently God talks to her and everything's good. So I find that amazing. She believes in, in doing right, doing good, and God supposedly speaks to her. So go figure. Okay? <laughs> Verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and hold fast to him, hold tight to him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. So it was an easy decision for these, well, the high priests and the, all the leaders of the Jews to put Jesus to death. And it says, it goes on, because he had spoken to turn you against the Lord your God. Well, that's the way they looked at it. Because they said at one point in the Gospels, you know, what is this new doctrine? Because it was a new doctrine. And it says, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slaves to thrust you out of the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put the evil away from the midst of you. So they were demonizing everybody that had a different doctrine. Everybody that came to them with a different doctrine was a, was a total devil. They needed to be killed. Which is not the way it was uh, throughout the entire Old Testament. They, they didn't do it. The Jews did not do it. They didn't kill the children that didn't believe. Because if you had a child that didn't believe, you were supposed to kill it. If your child was rebellious and a drunkard and a glutton, you were supposed to kill the, kill the kid. <laughs> I mean, this is the doctrine that Moses gave them. And Jesus even used that on the Jews when they tried to say that he didn't keep the commandments. We said, well, you're not keeping them either. You're not following the law to kill, kill your child if he's a drunk and a crazy and a glutton. And it goes on to say in the same vein. That's why I want to get through this. But it's still interesting. If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is like your own soul, lures you secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known, 
you or your fathers, that is, of the gods of the people who are around you, near you, or far off from you, from the one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth, you should not consent to him or hearken to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare you, nor shall you spare, spare them, I should say, or shall you conceal him, don't protect him, but you shall surely kill him, okay? Your hand shall be first on him to put him to death. So all these people that they mentioned here, your brother, uh, your son, your daughter, your wife, your friend, your best friend, if they say to you, this is what the doctrine was, it's not right. It's just not right. It's totally the opposite of the doctrine of Jesus. That's why a lot of people believe in Jesus, because he was he was uh, very tolerant. He was he was on one hand, but you can find verses where he wasn't tolerant. So that's a contradiction too. But in many, many, many verses, he was very tolerant of sin. Of people, you might say sin, you might say of the imperfections of people. But this says here that they're supposed to kill them. And in verse 9, uh, Your hand shall be first on him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. So that you do it first, and then the other people that you tell about that, they're supposed to help you, whatever. I think not. And says, You shall stone him with stones so that he dies because he has sought to drive you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. That's why they didn't have this doctrine in the, in the New Testament. Because if you're going to have that doctrine, then you have to start killing a lot of people. I mean, what about people that have their own self as God? What if they don't believe anything? That's a God. That's another God. What if they have a, a, a group that meets and they're humanists? They believe in humans, and they want to believe in, in just, you know, like the universal churches that are out there, universal religions. And they don't really believe in, in any doctrine of the Bible. They just believe that, you know, you just want to be a good person or whatever. And nobody preaches this stuff because nobody wants to hear this. Nobody in a church wants to hear this, these scriptures. They don't want to hear it. If they do, they're, going to, they're not going to go back. They'll probably stop believing after this. They won't even... This is what most people would, would, would react. This is how most people would be. They go to another church where they said nice things, like the pastor of uh, Lakewood Church in Houston. He just says nice things to everybody. He don't give, give you any of this stuff. No. It's like a different, this is like a different religion. That's why they don't let people in Israel or, or Christians because they say it's a different religion. We don't want any people from a different religion. Verse 11, And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you. So it was totally imperative that there was no other God. Verse 12, if in one of your cities, now here is, this is the, what really ticked me off. This is really what pushed me into the, the talk that I'm giving you. This is what really got me on this vein, on this focus. It's these verses coming up right here. This is amazing, really. This is really amazing. And they didn't follow this. They did not follow this. Because who would who would follow this? So I just wonder where this even came from. Well, maybe... But it's supposed to be from God. It's supposed to be commandments of God. But it does not agree with do not kill. I'm, we're gonna look, I'm gonna look at those verses. I'm gonna, we're gonna look at the, the Hebrew. 
what about the Ten Commandments? Do not kill. What is that supposed to mean? It doesn't agree with this stuff. So even within the, the Law of Moses, the Ten Commandments do not agree with the Law of Moses, really. Totally. Here it is. If in one of your cities which the Lord your God has given you to dwell in, you shall hear one saying, Certain men, the sons of evil, have gone out from among you and have drawn away those who live. And I put in some other city because most of the versions said, in that city. And I said, what do you mean? What city? In that city. What is that city? But I, what they're saying, I had after looking at many versions, they mean in some other city, so because they, they've gone out, right? Because if you look in your Bible, you'll see, you see in that city, what city? They've gone out from among you and have drawn away those who live in some other city. There's no version that says that. That's my version, <laughs> unfortunately. All right? Saying, let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Because notice it says in verse 12, if in one of the cities which the Lord God gave you. So you, it's, you're in Israel, and if they went out of that city and went into some other city, in verse 14, then you shall inquire and make search and ask diligently. And behold, if it is true, and the thing is certain, that such an abomination is done among you, I mean, they, what if they went to a city outside of Israel? There's plenty of people in, in other cities outside of Israel that don't didn't believe in the doctrine of Moses, in the doctrine of Israel. Plenty of them. They would have had to just continually do that, start killing, and this is what you were supposed to do. You shall surely strike down those who live in that city. So you're supposed to go to that city and kill everybody in the city. And they soften this stuff a lot of times. They say strike down. No, they mean kill. K-I-L-L. -L. That's what they mean. Kill. Kill those who live in that city. This is the a faithful version. So it says you shall kill those who live in that city with the edge of the sword. And then it says, and you shall gather all its spoil into the middle of its street and gather everything, you know, a lot of stuff, whatever, and shall burn the city, burn the city with fire and all its spoil, every bit of it, the whole thing, just burn the whole thing to blazes as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God, like, you know, like a burnt offering of an animal. He was supposed to burn the whole city as an offering to God. <sighs> you kidding. And it shall be a heap forever. And then you're not supposed to even use that land ever again. I beg your pardon. It shall not be built again. Well, that includes just about every city on the face of the earth except Israel. Because the whole world was full of people that didn't believe in the doctrine of Israel. Well, it's not Israel, it was Moses. It came through Moses. But think of the power that was manifest. A tremendous amount of power was manifest. So, you know, it's, it's scary in one hand because you have no power. You know, the power of God is beyond, far beyond the human power. Far, far beyond. And you have no power to even figure out what's even going on behind closed uh, doors, you might say. And so it goes on to say, let nothing, verse 17, let nothing of the cursed thing cling to your hand so that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show you mercy and have compassion on you and multiply you as he has sworn to your fathers. When you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to keep all his commandments, which I command you today to do that 
which is right in the eyes of the Lord your God. But like I say, they never followed this stuff. Like how, how could they? How could they possibly do that? They were fighting the Philistines with David. For some reason, they couldn't kill all them, or they weren't trying to. We don't even know. The information is limited. They had battles with the Philistines, and they never got rid of them. And there's no detail about what happened when they went in, except that they took out groups of people. But there's no details about what happened, how it happened. Think of all the things that could have been said. At least a couple of chapters. No, nothing. Zero. And then lastly, verse 18. When you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, to keep all his commandments which I command you today, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord your God. Notice I have here uh, three versions, okay? It's Deuteronomy 5.17. I got the King James, the GW, God's Word, and the Bible and basic English. And so I've said, you know, this commandment is not in harmony with the rest of the books of Moses. Because it just says, do not kill. Well, actually, I put do not kill because you know what? No version has do not kill. It says, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Or, here it is in the... Uh, and different variations on that, but they never say just do not kill. And people, that's when they quote that verse, that's what they'll say. It says, do not, do not, do not, but it doesn't say do not. Not in any version that I know of. So then we have the GW, and they said, never murder. Wow. If you wipe out an entire city, you just murdered everybody in the city, basically. You took their lives, killed them all, you murdered them. Now this, this Bible is the only one that had this right here. Bible in basic English. Do not put anyone to death without cause. Well, that's better, I suppose. But what cause does warrant a death penalty? That is a big question. As long as you have a cause, you can kill them. Well, serial murderers think they have a cause, apparently. But when it says, do not kill, thou shalt not kill, and I say, kill what? Insects? Animals? Or just people? It's incomplete up the yin-yang. Totally incomplete. You have to kill insects. They'll just run over on your house. And sooner or later, when they come in, you kill them. Or if you kill them on the outside, before they come in, they still come in. Invade your house. They were commanded to kill all kinds of animals as burnt offerings, sin offerings, trespass offerings, heave offerings. They were to kill all kinds of animals. So do not kill. Don't kill anything. Don't kill a fly. Don't kill a gnat. Don't even kill a little ant. Not one ant. That's nonsense. So here it is. Here's the, this, the Strong's. Just, you know, that word. I should have the number there, and I don't. It's, uh, I believe it's 7523 in the Strong's. But uh, it's interesting because it's Ratsack. But they say it's pronounced Ratsack. But it's a, in, in English, Ratsack. Uh, primitive root properly. So, so I discovered how I could copy this stuff into the documents now. So this is a major improvement. I found a way. Because I've mentioned the Strong's and all my messages, but I never had the actual Strong's print. Because it's fascinating. Sometimes it's like, what? 
In fact, I've got to include how many times it appears because this word, this Hebrew word, well, I know the word kill, K-I-L-L, -L, appears 47 times in the books of Moses, otherwise known as the Pentateuch, which nobody seems to use. You know, even the Jews don't use that word anymore, the Pentateuch, because that's another name for the books of Moses. It goes on to say, a lot of this is, you know, hard to decipher sometimes. A primitive root. Well, so what? This is properly to dash in pieces. So do not dash anybody in pieces. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. A kill a human being. Oh, it doesn't say that, though. Especially to murder. Oh, especially. Put to death, kill, and it says... Man slay. Do, yeah, do not slay. That's an old word. Nobody says slay anymore. And then murder. So it goes on, Leviticus 7 2. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, they shall kill the trespass offering. And the blood thereof shall be sprinkled round about upon the altar. I want to just put that in there to show you that there was all kinds of commandments to kill. So God says, do not kill. And the next verse, or in the next chapter, or the end of the chapter, he says, okay, now I want you to kill everyone, or kill the animals, kill multiple animals, and just kill, and do more killing. And kill a whole city. Women and children, and animals. When, when, the, when the God of the Old Testament told you to kill a people, he didn't just say many times. Then, then sometimes it wasn't said. But that didn't make any sense. So he would say, kill all the people and kill all the animals. So talk about the difference between saying, do not kill, and then kill everything that breathes. And that is what it says. Kill everything that breathes. Uh, I want to put together all the verses that say that. And it's hard to find them. Because, you know, the other versions change the meaning. They change things. Now, the verses that I'm going to read right now, I do not like how the other versions have, have rendered these verses. So I kept the King James big time. I really think these verses are tremendous and give you a little revelation on the mind of God. Well, so I'm, at this point, I'm saying the God of the Old Testament. Okay, and then we have Deuteronomy 32, 39 through 42. I'll move that up. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. You see, there's not three gods, like in the Trinity. You know, if you got to try to harmonize the old and the new. There's no God with him. There's no two other gods that are equal with him. There's no such thing. He is God alone. He says, I kill and I make alive. So he's saying that he's the one who kills, but then unfortunately he commands people to do the killing. And I'd say, well, if you want to do it, I mean, you're God, you can do it, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to butcher the animal. I don't want to kill the animal. Of course, if animals overrun the land, you got to kill them. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. In other words, there's no more powerful God that can save you from him who's God. He is supposedly the supreme God who created the earth and the sun. I believe in a, a being that literally creates galaxies. That's what I believe. I don't believe it was a big bang and then suddenly all these galaxies came popping out of nowhere. No. I think that's a lie. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. 
The other Bibles change that. None of them say that. I think this is great. Well, the Texas Receptus translations preserve this, as far as I know, all of them. So he lifts up his hand to heaven. So he can lift up his hand, apparently God himself, to heaven. But then you say, well, I thought he was in heaven. Well, apparently there's a heaven above God's heaven. Who knows? We don't know anything compared to what we could know. Verse 41, if I wet my glittering sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, so he supposedly has his own sword. I mean, because they didn't conquer the land of Israel by themselves, the Jews. You know, he was with them in some way, some invisible way. He was helping them. But yet they were doing the the killing. But they were physically killing them with the swords. <laughs> And spears. They never mentioned spears. I'm sure they use spears too, right? I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood. Well, it's people's. Uh, I, I forgot about arrows too. So you have swords, you have spears, and you have arrows uh, that the people you would use in those days but they were the peoples they weren't gods god was helping them in some mysterious way there's no doubt and in some cases he wasn't helping them and then they would lose uh, and my sword shall devour flesh not really sure how that works you know his sword and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of the revenges many of the versions change this of the beginning of the revenges on the enemy so he's taking re revenge on all the people that reject his doctrine but like I say the people were doing it he said do not kill and then he says do kill Kill everybody. And there's many cases in the Old Testament. You know, even King Saul was supposedly commanded to go and kill everything in a certain city. And he didn't do it. And then so he was totally rejected by God because of that, because he didn't kill everybody. But what about the Ten Commandments that says do not kill? Go figure, they don't they don't harmonize, they don't agree. It should have said, do not kill unless I command you to kill. That's what I've always said. Not always, but in the last couple of years. Do not kill unless I command you to kill. Because it's not just do not kill, period. 